We have been uh, <clears throat> talking about Jeremiah 31, 31, starting with verse 31, that is. And, um, but what we did was we went, we went through a bunch of scriptures in relationship to Elohim because the true theme that we're trying to deal with right now is Elohim. And we, um, and, and Elohim represents the triune God or more specifically, instead of putting it in theological terms, Elohim represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and particularly in their relationship to let us make man, let us, as three, as one, do our part to make man in our image and after our likeness. <clears throat> and so that obviously bleeds over into the New Testament even stronger, where we're mentioned and told to be conformed to the image of his son, conformed to the image of Christ. And um, uh, so <clears throat> we, um, we kind of, some of you who've been around a little bit, uh, we kind of looked at um, Abraham in, in uh, Genesis 18. And there we, um, uh, we saw some transitioning going on. Now, we're not ready to talk about that yet tonight. We will go back to that. But I want to take it a little further just so that we can we can see this thing and we can begin to grasp even further the intricacies of uh, Elohim. And uh, once we're done with that, remember, we, we talked about two names. Once we're done with Elohim enough, then we're going to go talk about Adonai. But tonight we want to try to finish out <clears throat> this this portion in relationship to to Elohim. So um, as I said, we're we're really we're going to mention the covenant, and it's pretty big here. And um, but our point again isn't really the covenant tonight. It is it is the in workings of God in relationship to it. So with that in mind, let's uh, look at Jeremiah 31, beginning with verse 31. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, I have a little bit different translation here, but I've probably got it better somewhere else. But I'm going to read this one. It's actually the new King James. It's still King James, but it's, uh, they've just edited a little bit of it. <clears throat> Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. <clears throat> All right, so that may have been the actual King James. Um, <clears throat> uh, so what we're, what we're looking for in the covenant, uh, <clears throat> and even in, in these scriptures, what we're looking for is we, we don't want to just know, we don't just want to read the scriptures and go, okay, and, and the basic surface thing is, that God is going to make a new covenant and it's going to be good for us. And, you know, that's, that's sort of the surface thing. <clears throat> but instead of looking at these verses with the thought of trying to find out particularly what it is that he's saying that benefits us, uh, and this is true of almost any of the scriptures, instead of looking at the scriptures all the time and you know in in context of how it benefits us <clears throat> that we might get to know the Lord get to know Elohim a little more get to know the Trinity but not just get to know them but yes that but to know them among them I don't know if that makes sense but to know that among them how they are and to 
see the interchange that flows with them and to see the heart and the way that they are with one another. And this is that little aspect that I just said right there will really apply to, to Adonai as we get into the, the other name that we're going to examine a little more closely. Um, and all of this, particularly Adonai, when we get into that, having much to do with First Peter. Okay, much to do with First Peter. So, <clears throat> so our approach, um, I mean, we're not going to ever see anything or know really anything of eternal reality or whatever uh, as long as we're just grabbing at stuff that applies to us and trying to figure out how, you know, uh, but but never, um, uh, never really taking him into consideration. Now, this is the, a huge part of who Adonai is, and I'm not trying to jump ahead. And it's also a huge part of what um, Genesis 18, verse 1 through however far it goes with uh, Abraham and his change complete change of approach, but not just approach. It's, my God, you can see it's such a hard thing in him from the change from chapter 17 or chapter 15, um, all of which contain uh, a really bad relationship Abraham has with God because it's all about himself. And it's all about asking for what he can get. And it's all about his eyes. And it's all about um, uh, uh, his security and his comfort knowing these things. I want to know these things so that I'll have security. And I want to know these things so I'll be comforted. And, and well, I don't, I don't have a problem with all of that. You know, I don't. I mean, I think it's great. But, I mean, at a certain juncture, don't you think that we ought to have security and and have a certain amount of comfort. I mean, I think this is probably part of what what really hit Abraham in chapter 18 is he probably started thinking about about every time he's been with God, all he's done is ask for stuff and God all God's done is give. And he probably thought, you know, this is this is too much. And and I I know it, you know, I mean, I see it in uh, the New Testament in many places, but I see it with with Paul over one of the most common scriptures that we know. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that last part is Paul recognizes that, that everything has come to me because he loved me and he gave himself so that I could live. He died. He, when we say he gave himself, he died. He went into death that, that we might have life. And, um, you know, and so just to eat that up like it's, you know, a big meal for us to enjoy. How about we recognize what he went through? Um, and so Paul, if you, you could kind of reverse those scriptures in a way and say that, you know, I, I'm living by a faith that he loved me by giving himself for me. Therefore, I'm going to do the same thing back to him. I am going to be crucified with you, Jesus. Nevertheless, I'll live, but it won't be me. It'll be so that you can live in me. And that's a reversal. That's a, that, it's certainly a reversal of the carnal mind. I'm not even talking about natural man. I'm talking about carnal Christianity with where its focus is. And, you know, some people never get past salvation. Um, Paul's, Paul's saying in Galatians 2.20, I got saved. I got loved. I got, you know, protected. I got all of this stuff. And <clears throat> I'm not satisfied with that. I want that same spirit working in me. I want that same faith working in me. And I want to love him back by 
you know, who loved me by giving himself for me is, is what it says of Jesus. Well, I want to love him by giving myself for him that he might live in me. So I hope that's plain, but it's, it's, it's really fundamental to understanding the Godhead, understanding Elohim, fundamental. Because before time, before sin, before the devil, before all this stuff, there was three of them, three of them. And this was the way they functioned, and they still do. They would always give themselves to one another. And if we have time, we'll look at some scriptures that, sh that, that shows that a little more clearly. And we've talked about it. So, but I just, I just think it's important that we understand Elohim in light of this tremendous thing of how they give and cover one another. And, and you talk about security. You talk about comfort. You talk about love. See, but you get outside of that and you just be some sort of rogue agent that's trying to trying to get God to do stuff for him. Security is has to be sought every day, probably. Okay. So um, <clears throat> looking at those scriptures, uh, the the goal that I would like us to do tonight, and and maybe this could be a little participation from you, so <clears throat> locate your unmute button if you need it, just in case you get called on or in case the Lord says something to you. <clears throat> um, what we want to discern in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, is we want to discern who it is that's speaking. Who it is that is speaking, okay? And you say, well, is that important? Well, yeah. <laughs> you say, well, give me a, a reason why. Because God decided somebody is speaking here, and we need to find out which one of the, uh, the Godhead is speaking and maybe why, and learn to tune in in the Scriptures first, to tune in to Scriptures, to look for that instead of going, you know, well, God said, God said, well, God said, you know, well, okay, how about the God had said in the person of, all right, with that in mind, <clears throat> okay, um, so I, what I'm going to do is read it again, and I want you to start looking and trying to discern which of, of the Godhead, the Trinity, of Elohim is speaking. Father, is it the Son? Is it the Holy Spirit? All right, here we go. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. <clears throat> so, so, the days come, saith the Lord. The word the Lord there is Jehovah. All right. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made, with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, thus saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their inward parts, and I will write them in your heart, and will be a, be their God, and they shall be my people. All right. So, um, the days will come when I will. When I will. All right. So, I'm going to call upon you. Anybody have any ideas? Uh, you know, let me just say this before I ask you to do it. Um, <laughs> uh there are no wrong answers. Now you're going to look at me and go, well, that's what everybody says, but I'm, I will probably say something dumb. Well, there's only three different possibilities, <laughs> His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And since it's, it is Elohim, then there are no wrong answers. So you can guess if you'd like, or you can pull out something from those verses that we read and say, 
Well, this leads me to believe that it might be so-and-so, um, or however you want to approach it. Again, uh, you, uh, when you unmute your mic and you tell me, you know, if you want to just be Russian roulette and just unmute it and say one name and, and check out, I'm fine with that, sort of. All right. So anybody want to give me an idea of who you think this might be referring to? Randy? Yeah. Scott? Um, I was just thinking maybe the son because he's talking about being a husband and that's the role Jesus plays in the New Testament. Okay. Amen. Well, see, now that's, <clears throat> I mean, that's the kind of answer I'm looking for. I'm just looking for one particular person and I'm looking for the reason why we might assume that okay now you might say oh uh, he picked the one I was gonna pick oh this is I was gonna say that now I got nothing to say and if everybody that's on the other side there thought Jesus that's fine but if I got anybody else that thinks someone else, just let me hear it. Randy? Uh, Dad is here. You okay? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, to me, it was sort of intuitively obvious. <laughs> the verse 32, we're talking about the Father. Okay. And verse 33, we're talking about the Son. <laughs> I mean, I just... I suppose I can equivocate, equivocate on 33 and say, well, maybe the Spirit. Right. But, uh, you know, I stick with Jesus, <laughs> which is a good rule. Yeah, it's always a good one. We can't argue with that, especially in this church. <laughs> um, great, Dennis. Praise God. Yeah, I like it. I like that you even went to other scriptures within those and could could pull out things that really spoke to you. And, and, and uh, there was a couple of things there that you said that I really liked. I'm not, not going to address them right now, but, but uh, it was really, really good. Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Randy? Mm-hmm. So ge genuinely, I did think this when we were reading, and I was asking the Lord, what, what, who is it? And I, to me, it was like the Father was first, and then the Son was speaking, and then the Spirit was speaking. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that to, you know, cover my bases, but I really felt like, with reference to what you shared last week, that um, it was the covenant about the firstborn. That would have been the Father wanting His Son to come to Him and sacrifice. So that would be the Father speaking. But then, like Scott said, the Son is the husband. So that would be the son speaking, but only the spirit can write it in our hearts. You know, only the spirit comes by nature and reveals Christ, you know, and so that has to be the spirit. So that was what I thought. It's really good. Thanks, Mallory. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Can you hear me? Uh-huh. I was I was actually thinking along the same lines as what Mallory said, and at the very end of the three verses, it, it ends with, um, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. So I just thought maybe like, maybe all three of them are speaking, and they all have a part <coughs> in, the, in that flow, because um, because like, like she said that at the very first I thought it was the Father because because the son was the one they were eating you know the father was making the covenant through the son and and they broke that covenant and then the husband part being jesus and then 33 sounding like the spirit and then they all come together and and like we will be their elohim and yeah. they shall be my people <laughs> boy you can't argue with that i mean that's that's uh again going to the the end name there and elohim then and we know, we know that 
what God wants in his heart. I mean, can I just say it like this? If, if, you, if you just tried to wipe away everything that was religiously affected us in certain ways, you would come to just certain basic things. And here's what I mean by that. If you, if you wiped away a covenant, or any covenant, uh, the covenant, you wiped away the thoughts of it, when you got back down to, like Genesis, uh, when, it, you know, the, when it first began and the only name was Elohim, um, and they were doing all the creating, just like what y'all are describing, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit involved, and we went through a bunch of those scriptures. Um, <clears throat> then you would hear, I would we hear, we could hear his heart speaking um, uh, among themselves and finding what their universal heart is. Let us make man in our image after our light. Okay, so so you can't go wrong with with identi- being able to identify Elohim, and and one of my desires uh, for uh, our for this this class and our getting together is never just to for to me to talk or whatever, but for us to discover the Lord and to take the scripture seriously, but in another direction seriously. Uh, uh, No longer just trying to find the rules to live by, but trying to find the life to live by and trying to find the interchange, as I've, I've used that word several times, the interchange between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, what we've described so far by your comments is we have descri- we have described the father and the son and the holy spirit and um, uh, we got some explanation of why which was really good because uh, you were a sort of able to identify them by certain elements that were there in those scriptures and um but but um but when you see him say, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, when you see that heart, there's nobody else around. That's just them. And I think that this covenant thing <clears throat> is like them. Uh, it's not just we can see the individuals. These guys are, are, are doing it. They're, they're bringing it forth. They're conceiving it. They're, um, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're working together, as it were, um, to bring that about. And I think that's, that's the bigger takeaway of these scriptures is that we are seeing uh, Elohim. Um, See, when we say the Trinity, sometimes our mind goes off to, well, the Son did this and the Father did that and this and that and whatever. But for me, Elohim, because Elohim was the one who said that at that time, uh, when there was no, no concept of Trinity in the, using that word or whatever, because um, uh, nobody was made yet. That's, he was talking about making them. Um, uh, you see that that they're they're thinking on the same level, but they have different parts. But they're thinking on the same level, and they're 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 working it out together because they have the same mind, and they have the same heart, and the same goals. In other words, it's. Um, it's uh, there's no division between them, <clears throat> um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and so you you know you, you you slowly, as we start getting more into the scriptures and things, you slowly 
begin to recognize these guys really do have an agenda, but it's not an agenda. It is a heart's desire, and it is they, that they are working towards that end. And, of course, the New Covenant brings us, it, it gives us all the tools to be made in His image. And I'll put my heart in you. I'll put my spirit in you. I'll, you know. So, <clears throat> anyway. I'm blessed. I'm blessed by what I've heard so far. And, and I don't want to cut anybody off. So anyone else have a comment on any of it? Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do... Um, is... Um, I'm going to read some scriptures, and, and some of you have uh, alluded to them, to some of them, and some of you haven't. <clears throat> so, as I read this, don't just let somebody read something. Try to listen to uh, certain parts. The first one's going to be easy. But when we get into the, some of the others, try to listen to certain things, clues, more than clues. Um, it's almost like a flower springing up out of dry ground where you begin to recognize the living God instead of just scriptures. All right, so the first one again. <clears throat> um, uh, This is um, <clears throat> Exodus 4.22. Um, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. <clears throat> That's pretty self-evident, that is pretty much confined to two members of Elohim. But you see something, and there's only one, one side of the two speaking, but in it, in it, you don't just see doctrine or you don't just see, oh yeah, I know that scripture. You see a heart. You see a father's heart for his son, the original father, the original son, from which all fathers in shadow form and all sons in shadow form were made, speaking about how strongly he wants his son out of Egypt. All right. Now, let me give you some others. Uh, <clears throat> Remember that you are seeking to listen and to discern Elohim or one particular or two particular members. <clears throat> This is uh, let's see Jeremiah three one. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. All right, so you got certain elements there that are similar to what we read in Jeremiah 31. You've got, um, you, you've got one person primarily speaking, it looks like, and he's not speaking about another member. Um, he's speaking about 
The other one in Jeremiah 31 said a husband. Well, this is mentioning it's using the word wife. Okay. Um, Jeremiah 3, 6 through 11. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, <clears throat> this is said unto me is Jeremiah, the Lord said unto me, the Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. You see, that, that little phrase is not turn back to God. This is turn back to your husband. And this is a cry of a husband. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, and she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorcement. I had, this is the Lord speaking. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart. But feignedly, saith the Lord. So, um, you know, it makes you wonder, and I have heard, um, <clears throat> uh, I have heard different people say, um, and in fact, some of my Bible school teachers were teaching that this is, uh, of course, they would say Jehovah. But they would say this is Jehovah that married Israel and then divorced Israel. Um, and they would refer that to the father, that the father was married. And then the son also got a bride. Uh, I, I'm not, first of all, I'm, I'm telling you what I was taught. I'm not telling you what I believe. I'm just telling you that that's, you know, that's what I've heard. So, you know, when you hear something like that, uh, you know, it's, it's good to, and like these things, it's good to, um, come after him to hear, because uh, I don't know how to put this, we're always, to me, it feels like a lot of the times we just seem to be going at it the wrong way. It seems like we're, we're trying to get hold of religion or we're trying to get hold of our security or we're trying to get hold of, you know, keep our salvation or we're trying to, you know, all this kind of stuff and it's so wrapped up in the earth and how God relates to me and what I can get out of it and all this and and um, and of course my heart is that I think that I think you know that's all fine and I think that for a period of time that's great but um, you know if what if all of that was just baby stuff did the Lord marry baby stuff I'm just I'm saying weird things, but I'm trying to mess with you enough to go. We need to find him. We need to know him and to to uh, see what is going on here and how it's become such a big deal before Jesus returns. <clears throat> All right. So. Um, um, let's see. Because I know it's getting, it's getting a little late here. So I'm going to try to finish off 
this. Um, I should have moved those scriptures down, or did I? Okay, um, so I want to go back to our original verses in Jeremiah 31 and um, <clears throat> read it one more time. Um, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out by the hand and to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, and although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be, and particularly right here, listen to this part, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Um, <clears throat> in the book of Hebrews um, he's talking about this. I want you to listen to this. It's basically saying these verses but I want you to listen to whom he attributes these words to. Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will, the Holy Ghost, make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Um, one of the things that I like, Dennis, about what you said was uh, <clears throat> that you, well, first of all, you related those the last part of, of Jeremiah 31 there to the Holy Spirit because, and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not saying it wrong or not putting words in your mouth, but the way that you said it, I just felt like it was because you understood that <clears throat> The Holy Spirit's going to have to put this in us, <laughs> you know. This isn't just Jesus putting it in us. The Holy Spirit has come to put this in us and to 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 bear witness of the life that we have and the and the Spirit of of uh, Christ that is within us. And so, um, so whoever wrote the Book of Hebrews, and you know, most people say it was Paul. I don't know who it was, but whoever wrote it said had this. Um, understanding I, I let me just put it in a simple way it's as if he's reading it there in Jeremiah and he goes I know who wrote that I know who wrote that that's the whole that would be somebody who really knew him and and it's over in um, chapter 9 somewhere around verse 14 I really don't remember that where some where he brings up again the Holy Spirit you know and um, so what, what I'm closing with is this. It is my desire that we get to know the Lord Elohim in such a way that we too could be reading the Old Testament or even in the New Testament, even in the book of Acts, because those guys, they did it too. Um, and, and be reading and go, oh, I know who's speaking here. You know, wouldn't it be even better if we go, oh, I know who that is. That's you, Holy Spirit. Or that's you, Jesus, or Father. I know your heart. That's you speaking. So that we didn't learn what their function was and identify them just by their function. We learn from, by being comfortable with them, by reading and tuning into them, we learned the Godhead and Elohim. And we learn that He's working on us to, to form His Son in us so that we would be like them and that Elohim spirit that we'll, we'll, I thought we'd get to it tonight, but we'll talk about 
next time, except we're going to take a break. So I hope you you won't be too, you know. Anyway, isn't the Lord wonderful? And his heart wonderful? And isn't, aren't we privileged to be able to sit and just talk about him the way we have tonight and the way you shared and the spirit and the life that you brought as well as uh, hopefully what I've heard and we're, we're feeding and nourishing one another and we're, we're doing our best not just, to, not just to gain some kind of depth of knowledge or something. But we're, we're growing up in Him together. Father, I just thank you again and again and again. I thank you. I thank you that your Spirit doesn't give up, not on our salvation or all the things we worry about, but He doesn't give up on trying to bring us into the fullness of this. I will write this, he says. I will, and he keeps saying it. So help us to know him and to know the Son beyond the theological aspects and to know the Father who Jesus said of him when you pray pray our Father. Oh, that we would so be in this family, so be in this family the way that they want us to be. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Loved your sharing. <laughs> Loved everything about it. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>